हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर चैनल ज्ञान कल्याण इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट बेसिस प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ बेसिस एंड पीएच इन दिस वीडियो आई विल कंटिन्यू विद द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ पीएच इन एवरीडे लाइफ सो व्हाट इज द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ पीएच इन आवर लाइफ इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो we have already discussed about what is ph and how it is used to measure the strength of acidic and basic solutions so now we will study about the importance of ph in everyday life how ph plays an important role in many activities of our everyday life we will discuss about it in short we can say that ph of gastric juices in the stomach is important in the process of digestion how ph changes in our mouth can cause tooth decay how the growth of plants and survival of animals depends on the proper maintenance of ph conditions in the environment in which they live and how they can be used by the organisms as as for self defense okay so first start with are animals and plants ph sensitive so it is a question whether animals and plants are ph sensitive or sensitive to ph yes they are the plants and animals are sensitive to ph changes in their environment in fact the growth of plants and the survival of animals depends to a large extent on the availability of the proper ph conditions in the environment so that they, it can suit them so first of all we'll discuss about plants most of the plants grow best when the ph of the soil is close to 7 okay so the best condition of or the best ph which is suitable for the proper growth of plants is 7 it means that it should not be acidic nor basic or too acidic or too basic it should be neutral okay that is the best ph for the growth of the plants if the soil is too acidic or too basic the plants grow badly or do not grow so if the ph of the soil is more than 7 or less than it then the growth of the plants become bad or they do not grow at all so the soil may be acidic or basic naturally or due to the addition of some chemical fertilizers in the field the ph of the soil changes and it becomes acidic or basic so the ph of acidic soil can be as low as 4 or the basic can reach above 8 or 9 so how can we prevent or how can we better the conditions of the ph in the soil chemicals can be added to soil to adjust its ph and make it suitable for planting or growing plants so some chemicals are added to the soil which control the ph of the soil so when the soil is too acidic at that time farmers can add base to the soil base in the sense like materials like quick lime or calcium oxide which is known as calcium oxide or slaked lime that is calcium hydroxide or chalk that is calcium carbonate these bases can be added to the field so these are these materials are base and they will react with excess acid present in the soil and will reduce its acidity or neutralize the effect of the acids so that's why when the soil is too acidic then a farmer or a person can add materials which are bases or if the soil becomes too basic or alkaline in that case the soil we can add organic matter to that soil which contains acidic materials the organic materials containing acidic materials can be added to the soil to make it better for the growth of the plants means the if we add acidic materials to the base basic soil too much basic soil then the effect of the basicity will will be managed 
So that's why if the soil is too acidic, then you can add base. And if the soil is too basic, then acids can be added to give the soil a proper pH. Next comes the survival of animals and how it depends on the change in pH. How the pH plays an important role in the survival of the animals. So the pH uh, plays an important role in the survival of animals including human beings. Our body works well within a narrow range of pH of 7.0 to 7.8. So pH changes in our body is important for our survival and the range of pH between 7.0 to 7.8 is the pH in at which the body of humans work well. So if due to some reason the pH gets disturbed, this pH range gets disturbed in the body of human beings, then many diseases can occur. When the pH of rainwater is less than 5.6, then it is called acid rain. So when the pH becomes low or it gets reduced, the rainwater is known as acid rain. If the pH of the rainwater becomes less than 5.6, it is called acid rain. So when acid rain flows into the rivers, it lowers the pH of the river water. So when this acid rain flows into the rivers, the pH of the river water gets lowered and due to which the survival of aquatic life in such rivers become difficult. So as the water of the as the rainwater becomes acidic and it gradually flows into the rivers, it also makes the river water acidic due to which the survival of the aquatic animals and plants living there, it becomes difficult for them. The, the high acidity of lake water or the river water can even kill the aquatic animals and plants. So, calcium carbonate is often added to this acidic water lakes to neutralize the acid that comes from acid rain. So, this prevents the fish from, the, from getting killed in the rivers. The next important is pH change in our digestive system. So, how the pH of gastric juices in the stomach is important in the process of digestion. So, our stomach produces hydrochloric acid whose pH is about 1.4. So, this dilute hydrochloric acid helps in digesting our food without harming the stomach. So, the hydrochloric acid which is produced in the stomach is important for the digestion of food and it does not harm the stomach. Okay, sometimes due to some reason the excess amount of acid is produced in the stomach. So, this excess acid in the stomach leads to the indigestion in our stomach which will produce pain and cause irritation. So, when the acid is produced in excess amount, it leads to indigestion. So, here the proper pH of the acid is important. The maintenance of the proper acid is important so that we don't feel any pain or any irritation due to indigestion. So to get rid of this pain, people use bases called antacids. Antacids are the group of bases which have the toxic effect in our body. Rather, it helps to neutralize the effect of the acid and helps to prevent indigestion. So the two common antacids used for curing indigestion due to acidity are magnesium hydroxide and sodium hydrogen carbonate. These are some of the antacids which is used to cure indigestion. As these are bases, so these antacids react with the excess acid in the stomach and neutralize it. So this gives relief to the person. Next comes pH change as the cause of tooth decay. So what is tooth decay? It is 
the damage caused to the teeth surface or enamel due to the lowering of ph in our mouth so tooth decay starts when the ph of the mouth is lower than 5.5 so it starts when the ph gets lowered then 5.5 that means the mouth becomes acidic when we eat food containing sugar then the bacteria present in our mouth breaks down the sugar to form acids this acid lowers the ph in the mouth so when a person eats food which contains sugar in them then the bacteria which is already present in our mouth breaks them down to the to form some acids and these acids lowers the ph in the mouth tooth enamel made up of calcium phosphate is the hardest substance in the body so tooth enamel it is the hardest substance which is present in the body it is made up of calcium phosphate though it is the hardest material but it gets corroded when the ph in the mouth is lower than 5.5 it does not dissolve in water but gets corroded when the ph in the mouth is below 5.5 okay the best way to prevent tooth decay is to clean the mouth after eating so there are many ways in which we can prevent our tooth from getting decayed the first and the best one is to always clean the mouth thoroughly after eating food by rinsing the mouth with lots of clean water you can keep your mouth clean which is the best way to prevent tooth decay again many toothpastes contain bases so these toothpaste can be used as a remedy for neutralizing the acids produced in the mouth so when we brush our teeth the base present in the toothpaste can neutralize the effect of the acids the excess acid which is produced so which will prevent tooth decay so we should always brush our teeth after eating food a person can change his food habits if a person has a habit of having lots of sugary foods like chocolates or ice creams you can change your food habit or you can lessen the quantity of intake of these kinds of food these this can help in preventing tooth decay so that is how the maintenance of proper ph in the mouth can prevent our tooth from getting damaged next is self defense by animals and plants through chemical welfare so now animals and plants use chemicals to protect themselves against other organisms by using those chemicals in self defense okay let us see how many animals and plants protect themselves from their enemies by injecting painful and irritating acids and bases into their skin themselves from their enemies the animals and the plants in order to protect themselves in self defense they will inject a painful and irritating acidic or a basic kind of a liquid into the skin of the enemies so they do this to protect themselves okay so that liquid injected inside the body of an organism will give immense pain and irritation okay for example when a honey bee stings a person it injects an acidic liquid into the skin which causes immense pain and irritation so generally the honey bee when it stings a person it will inject the acidic liquid which is the methanoic acid it is injected inside the person's skin and it will cause immense pain and irritation if the bee stings a person then rubbing a mild base like baking soda solution on the stung area of the skin gives relief so whenever a bee stings a person he can apply base a mild base for example baking soda on that stung area of the skin which will give relief because the base will neutralize the effect of the acid and ants sting injects methanoic acid into the skin of a person causing burning pain so similarly an ant sting also 
injects methanoic acid into the skin of a person which will cause burning pain so you can apply base over that area and get relief not only animals but plants also give painful stings so that is how the proper maintenance of ph plays an important role in the lives of both the animals and the plants so now we will start with another important topic of this chapter that is salts so what is a salt a salt is a compound which is formed when an acid or a base reacts with each other we have studied about the reaction of the formation of a salt while we were studying about the properties of both acids and bases that is how an acid and a base reacts with each other to form salt a salt is a compound formed from an acid by the replacement of the hydrogen in the acid by a metal so if we, if we replace the hydrogen present in the acid by a metal then a, a salt is formed okay for an example hydrochloric acid that is hcl now if we replace the hydrogen that is h of the acid by a metal atom say a sodium atom as sodium is a metal so if you replace the h by sodium then we will get a salt that is sodium chloride na cl okay so this is a salt called sodium chloride which is formed by the replacement of hydrogen in hcl with the atom sodium atom now see suppose it this is hcl it will react with sodium hydroxide which is a base okay hcl will react with sodium hydroxide which will form sodium chloride so the h is replaced by sodium atom to give the formation of nacl that is the sodium chloride which is the salt okay the hydrogen is replaced by the sodium atom there are some other examples of salts such as ammonium chloride let us see how it is formed so we will take hcl plus ammonium hydroxide that is nh4oh okay both of these will react to form nh4cl that is ammonium chloride so the ammonium is replacing hydrogen from the acid to form ammonium chloride which is the salt so this is how ammonium chloride is formed hcl reacts with ammonium hydroxide to form nh4cl which is the ammonium chloride again we have sodium sulfate so for the preparation of sodium sulfate we will take sulfuric acid h2so4 plus sodium hydroxide so acid plus base sulfuric acid plus sodium hydroxide to form sodium sulfate na2so4 so this is the salt so the acid will react with the base to form the salt here sodium is replacing hydrogen to form na2so4 that is the sodium sulfate so this is the formation of sodium sulfate so similarly copper sulfate is formed by the reaction between copper hydroxide and sulfuric acid okay the copper will replace the hydrogen from sulfuric acid and form copper sulfate so the name of the salts of the various salts comes consist of two parts okay for example NaCl it consists of two parts the first part comes from the name of the base and the second part comes from the name of the acid so if you again look back at the above example that is hcl reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride so now sodium comes from the name of the base that is sodium hydroxide 
and Cl that is chlorine comes from the name of the acid that is hydrochloric acid. So the salts of hydrochloric acid are called chlorides, the salts of sulfuric acid are called sulfates, the salts of nitric acid are called nitrates, the salts of carbonic acid are called carbonates and so on. So the salts which are derived from hydrochloric acid are called chlorides, okay, like sodium chloride, ammonium chloride and if the salts are derived from sulfates then they are known as sulfates sulfuric acid they are known as sulfates such as sodium sulfate copper sulfate and if it is derived from nitric acid then they are called nitrates sodium nitrate again carbonic acid sodium carbonate and this way it goes on next is properties of salts salts are mostly solids they have high melting points and high boiling points these are usually soluble in water they can they are soluble in water just like acids and bases they can also conduct electricity so salt solutions can conduct electricity why because they consist of both positively charged and negatively charged ions in them so due to the presence of ions in the salts they can conduct electricity and these are known as ionic compounds salts are known as ionic compounds they consist of a positively charged ion cation and a negatively charged ion anion for example in the case of sodium chloride salt you can see it consists of positively charged sodium ions okay sodium ions are positively charged and negatively charged chloride chloride ions chloride ions are negatively charged so salts are ionic compounds and they can conduct electricity due to the presence of ions in them now the pH of salts salt of a strong acid and a strong base are neutral with pH of 7 the salts which are formed from a strong acid and a strong base when a strong acid reacts with a strong base they will form a salt which has a pH of 7 so the salt is neutral okay if the salt is formed due to the reaction of the of a strong acid and a weak base when a strong acid and a weak base reacts with each other they are, the salt is acidic in nature with ph less than 7 on the other hand if the if a strong base and a weak acid reacts with each other they will form a salt and that will be having a ph more than 7 so the salts of strong acids and strong bases give neutral solutions which is having a pH of 7 okay in the case of sodium chloride salt so let us take an example of sodium chloride salt the sodium chloride salt is formed by the reaction of sodium hydroxide which is a strong base and hydrochloric acid which is again a strong acid so a strong acid and a strong strong base reacts to form sodium chloride so sodium chloride is neutral having a pH of 7 okay again the salts of strong acids and weak bases give acidic solutions so that pH is 7 okay less than 7 and the example you can take of ammonium chloride which is a salt of a strong acid hydrochloric acid and a weak base ammonium hydroxide so ammonium chloride which is a salt of a strong acid hydrochloric acid and a weak base ammonium hydroxide so this particular solution of an aqua solution of uh, ammonium chloride is acidic in nature so we can explain it as follows when uh, ammonium chloride is dissolved in water it will get hydrolyzed to form ammonium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid okay so ammonium chloride which is a salt of a strong acid hydrochloric acid and a weak base ammonium hydroxide so this particular solution of an aqua solution of uh, ammonium chloride is acidic in nature so we can explain it as follows when uh, ammonium chloride is dissolved in water it will get hydrolyzed to form ammonium hydroxide and 
hydrochloric acid okay so the reaction will be ammonium chloride will react with water means the ammonium chloride will be dissolved in water it will undergo hydrolysis to form ammonium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid okay ammonium hydroxide is a weak base and hcl or hydrochloric acid is a strong acid so as hydrochloric acid is fully ionized it will give a large amount of hydrogen ions on the other hand ammonium hydroxide which is a weak base so it will be slightly ionized and uh, it will give a small amount of hydroxide ions since ammonium chloride solution will contain more amount of hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions in it therefore it will be acidic in nature okay due to the presence of more amount of hydrogen ions which is the reason behind the acidic nature of ammonium chloride solution and the salts of weak acids and strong bases will give basic solutions or the ones which have pH more than 7. So we can take the example of sodium carbonate. So sodium carbonate is the salt of a weak acid that is carbonic acid and a strong base sodium hydroxide. So when weak base, weak acid that is carbonic acid and a strong base sodium hydroxide are react together then they will form the aqueous solution of sodium carbonate which will be basic in nature let us explain it how and the salts of weak acids and strong bases will give basic solutions which have a pH more than 7 so we can take an example of sodium carbonate so sodium carbonate is the salt of a weak acid carbonic acid and a strong base sodium hydroxide so the aqueous solution which will form which will be formed after the reaction of this weak acid and the strong base will be the sodium carbonate and it will be basic in nature let us explain how so when is uh, sodium carbonate is dissolved in water it will get hydrolyzed to form sodium hydroxide and carbonic acid okay so when the sodium carbonate is dissolved in water it will form sodium hydroxide base and carbonic acid okay so in this reaction sodium hydroxide is a strong base so it will be fully ionized and will give a large amount of hydroxide ions in water on the other hand as Carbonic acid is a weak ba weak acid it's which is slightly ionized and so it will give less amount of hydrogen ions. So due to the presence of hydroxide ions, due to the presence of large amount of hydroxide ions, due to the pres uh, because of the ionization of sodium hydroxide, the solution will be basic in nature. Okay, because the presence of hydroxide ions in the sodium carbonate solution will be more. So we will find the pH to be more than 7. So now we will discuss about examples of salts, types of salts. Okay. So the first is common salt which we use in our daily life or we use it daily. So common salt we all know what it is. It is a white powder and uh, it is used in the preparation of food okay, while cooking everybody uses salt so that is the common salt which is the sodium chloride okay the common salt is a white powder which is used in preparing food and it is also known as just salt we generally say it as salt the chemical name of the common salt is sodium chloride that is NaCl so now how can you prepare common salt it can be prepared in the laboratory by the combination of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. So we know the reaction of how the salt is formed. Sodium chloride is formed. Sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid reacts to form sodium chloride salt along with water. So the sodium chloride formed here can be evaporated to obtain solid chloride salt. 
so the salt we use is in the solid form so the so sodium chloride solution which is formed in this reaction can be evaporated so that we get the solid sodium chloride salt there are various uses of common salt or sodium chloride okay it is of course used in cooking food as it improves the flavor of food and it is required by our body it is very important for our body for the working of uh, nervous system the movement of muscles and the production of hydrochloric acid in the stomach for the digestion of food in all these functions the sodium chloride helps our body so along with this it is also used as a raw material for the manufacture of various useful chemicals in industry such as sodium hydroxide which is the caustic soda sodium carbonate washing soda sodium hydrogen carbonate which is the baking soda hydrochloric acid and many more it is also used as a preservative in pickles okay and in preserving fish or meat okay it is also used in the manufacture of soap so these are various uses of common salt but here we will read about the manufacture of the chemicals the chemicals which can be obtained from the sodium chloride in details okay the first chemical compound we are going to discuss about is sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide is commonly known as caustic soda the chemical formula of sodium hydroxide is NaOH so sodium hydroxide which is commonly known as caustic soda its chemical formula is NaOH so let us see how it is prepared when electricity is passed through an aqueous solution of sodium chloride called brine it decomposes to form sodium hydroxide the process is called chlor alkali process of the products formed because of the products formed chlor for chlorine and alkali for sodium hydroxide so the raw material will for producing sodium hydroxide is sodium chloride okay and sodium hydroxide is produced by the electrolysis of a concentrated aqueous solution of sodium chloride that means when electricity is passed through the aqueous solution of sodium chloride which is called brine then it decomposes to form sodium hydroxide so this process is also called chlor alkali process why the chlor the word chlor comes from the chlorine and alkali comes for sodium hydroxide so you can see the reaction the chemical reaction or the equation of this reaction is 2 NaCl plus H2O gives 2 NaOH plus Cl2 plus hydrogen means when electricity is passed through the aqueous solution of sodium chloride then it will decompose to form sodium hydroxide NaOH along with chlorine and hydrogen gas so these two products are also very important and useful so during electrolysis chlorine gas is produced at the anode so anode is the positive electrode and hydrogen gas is produced at the cathode which is the negative electrode so sodium hydroxide solution is formed near the cathode okay so the three compounds which are formed are very useful so now we will see the uses of sodium hydroxide so the first use of sodium hydroxide is sodium hydroxide is used for making soaps so sodium sodium hydroxide is used for making soaps and many kind types of detergents sodium hydroxide is used for making artificial fibers textile fibers such as rayon sodium hydroxide is used in the manufacture of paper it is used in the manuf purifying bauxite ore from which aluminum metal is extract so it is used for purifying the ore that is the bauxite ore from which aluminum metal is extracted so remember that sodium hydroxide is used in the purification of the bauxite ore from which the aluminum metal is extracted it is used in the degreasing metals 
oil refining and making dyes and bleaches. So these were some of the uses of sodium hydroxide. In the next video, I will discuss about more types of chemical compounds. Thank you.